The first thing is the grip. And I've got on my hand the knuckle and heel pad spots with a line drawn between them. This is what you need to know in order to use the proper grip. And I'll explain why we want to use a continental grip on the, on the, um, the backhand on the, as the two-hander. But the first thing we gotta do is we gotta work on changing the grip. So right now you're keeping your forehand grip. We wanna learn to change the grip. So let's talk about the bevels. First off, the bottom of the racket should be on its edge, not flat, it's gotta be on its edge when talking about bevels. And it's an octagon, 360 degrees divided by eight. So each bevel is about 45 degrees. Since you're right-handed, we count clockwise. Bevel number one is always on top. That's only if the racket's on edge though, but bevel number one is on top. It doesn't matter which edge is on top. Just pick an edge, put the racket like this, and you're good. Bevel number one is on top. We're going cl clockwise. Bevel number two is the 45 degree angle bevel. That's the bevel we need now for your two-handed backhand. Bevel number three, that's an Eastern forehand, semi-Western, full Westerns on the bottom. Those are forehand grips. But the top bevel, bevel number one, that's for a one-handed backhand. Bevel number two, that is for a two-handed backhand. That's actually the way I teach it. It's very easy. One-handers have their bevel on one, or use bevel one. Two-handers use bevel two. That's not why you do it, but it just, it's cool to remember that way. So what we have to do is we have to take this line that's on my hand and line it up on bevel number two. So bevel number two is this bevel here, the 45 degree angle, flat bevel. I have to take my hand and line it up on bevel number two. Now, if I open up my hand, you'll notice you cannot see the line. My line between the heel pad and the knuckle of my uh, base knuckle of my index finger is lined up perfectly on bevel number two. This is called a continental grip. Again, I'll explain why we need to do this in a second, but we first gotta learn just to grip change when we see it's a backhand. So as soon as the ball is hit to us, we've got our forehand grip typically, which is what you've got. The moment the ball comes to us, we have to change our grip. We want to learn to change the grip, not by just turning the right hand, but actually moving the knuckle over to the bevel and the bevel over to the knuckle. So it's kind of like this. You're just taking your palms and turning them away. So watch this again. I'm like this. So we're gonna teach you how to change grips. My left palm is facing that way. My right palm is facing that way. So I'm like this. I've gotta do this. Now, only my bottom hand is actually changing the way it's on the racket. The top hand will be moving the racket. Watch the pros, when they change their grip, especially the two-handers, when they change their, and the one-handers, when they change their grip, they aren't just moving the knuckle and changing the bottom hand, they turn the racket. It, it means kind of like when you clap, you don't just clap like this or you clap like this, you have the hands meet in the middle. Instead of having the knuckle do all the work, which is a little awkward, because you gotta get the knuckle to change 45 degrees, from a, at least from an Eastern to a continental grip, that's a 45 degree change in your hand. It can be a little awkward with your right arm making that whole change. So what you can do is move the bevel over to the knuckle and they meet in the middle. So I'm just making that move, kind of like I'm grinding pepper. It's the exact same thing. I'm just gonna make this move. I'm turning the racket as I'm turning my right hand and they meet in the middle and I get my grip changed to a continental grip. Now, you're gonna have to practice that like all day, every day. So from now for the next maybe two weeks, anytime you're watching TV or you're anywhere, at home, just doing nothing, you need to just grip change over and over and over again. You've gotta to learn to change the grip. Maybe even watch TV, uh, tennis on TV. And anytime the person at the bottom of the screen is hitting a forehand, keep your forehand grip. And anytime the person at the bottom of the screen is, that, that's who you are gonna be, the person at the bottom of the screen. Anytime they hit a backhand, change your grip to a backhand. Notice I'm turning the racket, not just turning my hand, but I'm turning the racket at the same time I'm turning my hand. That's a really great, quick way to change the grip. The next thing, you were keeping your forehand grip and you were taking your racket down low and then actually lifting it up to hit. So you don't wanna go down low if you can help it on the way back. Ideally, the best thing to do is to keep it up where the racket head is around the same height as your head. So it'll actually rise up slightly on the way back. A good way to think of it is 
take your racket back 180 degrees, your body sideways 90 degrees. I'm 90 degrees from my target, but my racket's moved back. You know, obviously this is 360. My racket's gone back 180 degrees. Just turn around and face your racket. You should be in a ready position. Your racket should be in the same position, really, it was here. It'll be a little higher usually, so you can get more gravity-assisted acceleration, but we do want the racket tip to be pointing up when we take the racket back. Now, when you took your racket back, you went down and then lifted the racket to hit. So you actually fought gravity coming up and then smacking into the back of the ball. Really gonna reduce your consistency because you're not able to hit top spin. Now that we've got the grip change, and the racket is staying up on the way back, and you just wanna shadow swing these things at home. You just wanna practice taking your racket back 180 degrees with your body turning 90, and the racket staying up on the way back. One of the ways to do that, especially, is to make sure that your back elbow is up. What I teach in the ready position is not elbows in, but elbows out. You should be waiting with your elbows out, so that when you change the grip and you turn, you've already got this back elbow up, that way when you drop, it's gonna be easier to do the next idea. And that is to close your racket face. At the moment, you've got your forehand grip and you're going straight down and your racket is straight up and down. I could take this pen and balance it on the edge. You don't want that. You don't wanna be able to balance a coin or a pen on the edge. You need your strings to be closed. That's why, so closed means like this. That's why we need to change the grip. Changing the grip gets our racket closed in the back once we've dropped the racket. So we grip change, keep the racket head up 180 degrees back. Then when we drop our racket, we close the racket around 45 degrees. It'll be a little easier to see this when we show you from the back view. But we close the racket about 45 degrees. What this allows is for you to swing up and have your racket square at contact. At the moment, because you've got your forehand grip and your racket is straight up and down, you don't like swinging up. As I mentioned in the side-by-side -side comparison between your backhand and my backhand, if you were to swing up, you'd hit the ball over the fence. Because when you swing up, your racket's straight up and down, and then your racket's open at contact. The racket is always more open at contact than it is in the back. So if your racket's straight up and down, it'll be open at contact. If it's closed because you changed your grip and you could get your strings to point down, now your racket will be straight up and down at contact. See how this works? If it's straight up and down in the back, it'll be open at contact. If it's closed prior to contact, it'll be square at contact, which is what you want. When we strike the ball, we're trying to go low to high, getting the ball to spin. It's a great invention, Top Spin Pro you can see the ball spin. When you hit the tennis ball, you want to make the ball spin. This is what you're trying to do, horizontal axis, and you're just trying to spin up the back of the ball. So we're trying to go from low to high, spinning the ball. The ball will go up slightly off the racket, it will spin and rotate over itself, that puts high pressure on the top of the ball, and it pulls the ball down into the court. So you're super, super consistent. Tennis is a lifting game, we want to learn to swing low to high as we hit this ball, and the Top Spin Pro definitely helps with that. So we've got our ready position, the new ready position with our elbows out. You're turning and taking the racket back, keeping your elbows out, but changing the grip, as we've talked about, taking these two spots, the knuckle and the heel pad, and changing it from your forehand grip to bevel number two. Elbows out, the racket's up, I could turn around and I'm in a ready position. From here, I'm gonna probe, I'm gonna move around. Where do I need to be, right? The ball comes to me, I split step, I turn, I'm moving around. Now I'm where I wanna be, the, I'm ready to drop, close the racket face, and I turn the body, back foot comes up on the toe, turn the hips, and I'm going from low to high, rolling up the back of the ball. When you hit the ball, you would swing flat into it, and you'd actually pull across and your racket was way over down here. Again, this will be easier to see from the back view, where you saw my finish, and I finished with my hands higher than eye level. So, one more time, and then we'll go from the back. We split step, elbows are out, I turn and I change my grip. The grip change happens between here and here. From in front 
to behind. I already changed my grip, but you couldn't see it. I'm doing this, but it's, it's hidden in the turn. I move around with my racket 180 degrees back. I drop, usually I drop when I step and my body goes down at the same time. I'm then gonna come up and roll up the back of the ball and then I'm gonna finish high. You almost feel like a golfer because you're really swinging low to high. Top spin is a vertical spin. So we wanna have a vertical swing path in order to create that vertical spin. All right, let's check it out from the back. It'll be a little easier to see the closed racket face and the finish from that perspective. All right, so we've got the ready position. Notice my elbows are out. Most players, I see their video from the back and you can't see their elbows because the elbows are jammed in. You want your elbows out. Teaching pros, and I love it, they always, they're right about it. They always talk about getting this back elbow up on both sides, this chicken wing on both sides. Well, guess what? The elbow should be up in the ready position to allow that to happen. So whether you're hitting a forehand or a backhand, you want your elbows out. So that way, whether it's a forehand or a backhand, you're set. I mean, it's called a ready position, not a starting position or a waiting position. It's called a ready position for a reason. So we wanna have our elbows ready so that when we turn, it's correct. Now, remember from the beginning of the backswing to the end of the backswing, all the way back here, the racket stays up and we have to grip change. So we're going from our forehand grip, right? The ball comes to us, we split step, we change the grip. I've already changed the grip by the time my racket's here. The grip, grip changes happen in a second. I mean, not even a second, like a split second. I mean, grip changes are so fast, right? Grip change, grip change. I mean, it takes no time to change a grip. Split step, change the grip, and my racket is all the way back. If I were to face the camera, I'm in a ready position, right? That's how far back I wanna go. In my ready position, grip change, racket's all the way back, back elbows up. From here, the racket drops. Now, it's gonna drop when you're ready to swing. So you might be able to hang out up here a little bit. The ball comes to you, you split step, you turn, you move around, and the racket stays up here. That way, when it drops, it can just accelerate and then go to the ball. So we drop the racket down, and when we drop the racket down, we need to close the racket face. You can see my strings pointing down. Let me move this forward a little bit. You can see my strings pointing down slightly, about 45 degrees, between 30 and 45 degrees is great. When you close the racket face as a club and recreational player, it makes it then very easy to get your racket square against the back of the ball. You are used to not changing your grip and your racket straight up and down. So if you were to swing up, trying to hit topspin, thinking, oh, low to high, swing low to high, the ball would go way out because the racket face would be open. So this is not what you want in the back. You want this, and I'm doing that with the grip change. So you're gonna change the grip, put the racket all the way in the back. Now you'll notice when I drop my racket, my palm, my left palm is turning toward the ground. So I'm gonna take my racket with a grip change all the way back behind me, and I'm gonna use my left palm. The feeling of this is use your left palm to close your racket face and you'll close the racket face again about 45 degrees. Then you're gonna to wanna to learn to swing low to high. Again, putting topspin on the ball, getting that ball to rotate, swinging low to high. Topspin is a vertical spin, so we have to have a vertical swing to be able to create topspin. Now remember, you used to swing by hitting flat and come across, and your elbow was jammed. Anytime you see somebody with a jammed elbow in their finish, it isn't their elbow that's the problem. Something happened prior that forced them to swing flat into the ball and then continue to swing flat, and that's why their elbow's all jammed. By changing the grip, having the racket up, but then closing the racket face at the bottom of the swing, now you learn to swing up, and now you can have this space. You look at Djokovic when he's done hitting a backhand, there's all this space under his right elbow. Now you can actually swing low to high as you hit the ball. So it should look like this, feet moving, split step, grip change all the way back, drop and close the racket, spin up the back of the ball, finish with your hands higher than eye level and the right elbow is up. Keep moving, split, all the way back. My left elbow is up, if your elbow drops, that's when the racket goes open and the swing becomes too big. You want that racket straight up and down and you do that by keeping your left elbow up and you do that by having the elbows out in the ready position. Grip change, all the way back, drop and close, spin up the back of the ball, finish with your hands higher than eye level, and then back to the ready position. Advit, thank you so much.
I'm trying to explain it over and over and over again. It's going to take hearing it over and over and over again to get it. So obviously you can't watch this video just once. You're going to have to take each idea. First, the grip change. Next, straight back. Next, closing the racket face. Next, swinging low to high. Last, having your hands higher than eye level with that right elbow up. Take each idea, those five ideas, and you have to just work on them for two weeks or three weeks. You don't even have to hit balls. You can just shadow swing with a racket, slowly, slowly practicing, right? How to take your racket with a grip change all the way back behind you. How to drop the racket and close the racket. Racket's all the way back, close the racket about 45 degrees. Then present it to the contact point. Then swing low to high and finish with your hands higher than eye level. Take your time. The slower you go with this, the faster you're going to learn it.